what we do is that we have uh, we can't carry a radiator in the car, so we have water tanks in the car. One such water tank uh, supplies the water strictly for the engine, and uh, we try to maintain a certain temperature when we have that water in the engine, and we have another water tank uh, made uh, for what we call the intercooler, which is a device that lies between the intake manifold and the supercharger. And what that does is uh, when the fuel comes through the uh, into the supercharger from the injector, uh, we want to keep it at a cool temperature so when combustion takes place in the engine, it's extremely efficient and we're getting good, clean combustion and uh, the engine doesn't uh, pre-ignite or detonate the fuel when we actually when the engine is running. So, so we have two distinct water tanks, and we even have uh, a device for the driver, which is a cool suit that also runs off one of the tanks that we have. That uh, It's a series of plumbing we have, and he wears a jacket that has tubes running up and down it because... Uh, well, that's right. I've seen one of the drivers wear yes, that. And, yeah. we, and so we have that connected to uh, one of our water tanks. And uh, uh, before each run, what we do is that uh, we open the opening of the tank and fill it full of ice. And we may put three to four bags of ice in this, these tanks before we make a run. As you know, when you run in the, in the heat of the day, which is summer there at Bonneville, the temperatures can get well over 100 degrees. And when you're enclosed in a car like that, it's even hotter. So, so the same system cools the car and cools the driver. That is it. That's pretty much what we do when we have that with us. So, and we use the water for ballast as well. The car has mm-hmm. to have some weight, and having that weight in the car, basically, and to, to simplify it, it keeps the car on the ground pretty much. And then, of course, we have another tank which carries the fuel, and we have another tank on top of that that has... Oil, basically, we use what's called a dry sump system for this engine, and the oil is uh, basically is, is pumped from the tank to the engine and services the engine and then pumped back into the tank again, and it runs through a series of filters to keep it clean. And so uh, that's, that's pretty much the, the, that's the complexity of these kind of engines that run at Bonneville. And... Uh, other items that are on there is just a maze of plumbing and electrical wires for gauges and switches and levers and, and things like that. And, of course, the, one of the most important things, of course, is the brakes and the parachute, that we have better brakes. And we've had a company uh, build brakes for us, so uh, we've, we've gone about that. We've had special brakes made, uh, and uh, so we're hoping to have a better means in which to slow the car down uh, when we make and finish a run. So, And then the parachutes are always tested. Uh, we take them to the manufacturer and have him examine them and look at the thread count and look at everything that's in the parachute each year. We examine each one, and they have to be certified. They have to be uh, a certification sewn right into the, uh, the parachute so we know that it's uh, something that they've accepted as something safe to run. And the same thing goes for the seat belts in the car. Uh, they are certified uh, every so many years, and they have to reach a certain level. And then the, the suit that the driver wears is another important factor that he has to wear a specialty suit uh, that if the, a mishap occurs, such as a leak where it would create either a fire or whatever, uh, he would have a fire suit, and it would allow him time to slow the car down and uh, get out of the car. But uh, to add to that, uh, these cars are also required to have an onboard fire system. And uh, what we have done is uh, we have a fire system that uh, is uh, designed to uh, suppress a fire not only on the engine but on the driver as well. And we have that on board. And before you take a venture of this kind on, what you do is that you go and uh, uh, attend a lot of these events and have a look at how the cars are built. And then there's ar- articles written in some of the magazines that show the anatomy of a car. And but how this is it, also part of the beaut- beautiful part of being a member of a club where you can use the people um, there as like a, a sounding board. If you're able to do that, if you're new, it, it's a little difficult. But, uh, again, uh, being and just to attend the event to have a look at the cars they they let you look at the cars this is one of the places where mm. spectators can actually get up close to the cars and take and ask a lot of questions pictures uh this is really one of the only sports that uh 
uh, land speed racing and drag racing, these are the only sports where you can really get up close. Uh, the other type of sports, uh, pretty hard to get close to anybody and get any information out of that. So this is kind of one of the reasons why we chose it. Plus, again, we like to go fast, so that's the intent of doing all.